All right, we're in the uh, home stretch. Um, thanks for uh, sticking with me uh, to this point. Um, usually I give these kind of talks as sort of an opening talk and, you know, what is an LLM? Why aren't there more letters in the acronym? Um, but uh, and it, it's, uh, in this case, it's, it's, it's nice to kind of be able to close the conversation uh, with this topic because um, we've seen, we've experienced a couple of failures in, in, in LLMs, we all have, right? And um, it seems random, but uh, I'd, I'd like to just, uh, you know, show you that um, it's uh, non-deterministic, but it's also not random. You know, things, things you can kind of predict where things, um, the kinds of areas where uh, prompts fail and where uh, queries fail to, to an LLM. Um, just by way of introduction, so my name is uh, Chris Connor. Um, Relinvent is a, a consultancy that does um, generative AI readiness and uh, product development um, consulting. So I spend a lot of time talking to people about where they are on the maturity curve and how they can um, uh, make use of, of generative AI. In working with uh, Sean's team and, and, and Mike and, and Nikolai, and then t talking to uh, to Victor, um, you'll see a lot of the. Uh, I've tried to sum up a lot of the concepts and, and topics that we've uh, been talking about. So hopefully, uh, you know, you see you you will have more questions. Hopefully, you have a few answers. And like a good LLM. Um, you probably know all these things already, but hopefully I'm going to express them in a way that you haven't heard before. And maybe have you consider things a little bit differently, which, which uh, really um, helps to uh, explore the, the problem and, and come up with uh, answers. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about the vector space and the output space for LLMs. And I'll kind of talk a little about what exactly that is if you're not familiar with them. Um, discuss some failure modes. Um, which actually account for a lot of the failures you'll see in LLM conversations. Um, and then I'll give you some very overly uh, simplistic guidance for avoiding hallucinations. Um, I, I, I already, as, as Sean was talking, I immediately remembered one of my uh, points of guidance that I, I forgot to put in, so I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, giving that verbally. <laughs> So, um, all right, so let's just uh, start with some, some credits. Um, I have to credit uh, uh, Grant Sanderson at uh, Three Blue, One Brown. Uh, if you haven't seen Grant Sanderson's uh, YouTube videos, um, they are fantastic. Uh, it's a, he's a master at representing some really um, very deep mathematical concepts uh, in a visual form. I'm a visual learner myself, so these really uh, speak to me. So his series on, on uh, LLMs and GPTs is fantastic. I, I highly recommend it. Um, the other thing I'd recommend um, is the Mathematica exhibit at the Museum of Science. Um, it's, it's really all about probability. And I think it's interesting that Pascal apparently tokenized all his his work because that looks like it's all chunked up. Um, <laughs> I just, I thought that was hysterical. So uh, with that, um, this list of failures, uh, hallucinations are exhausting uh, themselves. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list, um, but uh, a, a couple of ways that you will see LLMs fail. Uh, catastrophic interference, uh, they call it. Um, it's, a, it's essentially the LLM starts to forget what it's learned. Reduce versatility so it won't be able to do a lot of the different things it was able to do before because it's, it's had um, either an issue with training or um, dur during inference. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, bias amplification, so it starts to, when, when LLMs fail, they will start to um, uh, produce more biased information. Um, coherence loss is when it just kind of loses its ability to speak. Uh, that can happen. And uh, mode collapse is, is my personal favorite, and I think that's uh, what, um, what Sean was running into. Uh, mode collapse is, is where 
the vector, the reference vector that the transformer is using to um, align itself uh, and, and uh, traverse the vector space. So basically the, the, the semantic representation, the thing that it's looking for starts to fall off kilter and instead of launching agents, it starts to debug its JavaScript, which is an interesting, an interesting vector, but not the one that you were supposed to be on. So you'll see mode collapse um, quite a bit. It's, it's not actually, a, it's, a, it's, it's very, um, it's, it's a hidden manner of failure in, in LLMs, so it, it, it doesn't get a lot of um, exposure in terms of, uh, in, in terms of the literature. Um, there's much more of it on uh, um, uh, generative adversarial uh, networks, GANs, You'll see a lot about uh, mode collapse in, in GANs, but uh, that's it, it happens in, uh, in LLMs. So, so why do they fail? Well, it's really all about the data at the end of the day. And it's not, you know, that's the answer no one wants to hear. <laughs> you know, look at your data. Um, what, what kind of question are you asking the LLM? Ask a better question, that kind of thing. Um, but really, that, that's absolutely the answer. So if you're, if you're training, uh, uh, an LLM or fine-tuning an LLM, um, make sure you understand uh, th the data in, in all its um, uh, in all its uh, goodness and, and, and badness. Um, and one of the things that uh, is kind of the, the most common uh, reason for failure is is overfitting in in some manner. So either you're overfitting the the, the training data, or you can actually overfit during inference with the prompt, right? So if you start feeding it data, um, noisy data as part of the, the prompt, um, you'll, you'll bias the, uh, the output that way. So let's just talk a little bit about training in LLM. How, how does, you know, how, how do these things get built, right? So you start with the, the, the black box, if you will, right? Start from kind of square zero. And, um, and you get some training data sets and foundation models are trained with things like Wikipedia and Common Crawl and Stack Overflow and Reddit. Um, and you take, and it takes all of this and it just fills up its, um, it builds its own vector representation and figures out what the relationships, the semantic uh, similarity between all of these points are, right? And it builds uh, based on the number of parameters it has, it, it, it builds relationships between all of these points. All of these points are related to all the other points, right? So when you change one thing, this is a good thing to keep in mind, when you change one thing, you're impacting everything else in some way. So uh, after the LLM does its thing, right, it, it, it comes out and it does its own assessment of what the relationships are between these, the semantic relationship between all of these things are. Um, it, it then needs to be um, confirmed, right? It, it's not gonna get it, unsupervised learning is not gonna get it at the first shot. So the LLM uh, needs to be, um, have some reinforcement training um, and that's usually human in the loop, right? So um, OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, Meta spend billions of dollars on real human beings doing like a DISPY up down vote and going in and changing changing prompts um, uh, you know, there, there are teams of uh, experts going in and evaluating the prompts and the, and the generations and feeding that back in and reinforcing the, the biases essentially setting the weights for all of these vectors in the uh, in the LLM and you know, as, as, it, as it sets them, it, it, it makes things either uh, more prevalent, more biased, more, you know, adds weight to, to some, um, uh, and uh, uh, tries to steer away from, from others. Um, so after all that weighting's done, the, the LLM is, is, is ready for, for, um, for release. From your perspective, you can think of all of these weights as the same, right? So every um, every node, every neuron in the in the uh, in the model, um, all have the same all have the same weight now, 
right? So when you go to tune it, um, you have all of these, all of these uh, parameters that are in there, all the things that it's ever learned, right? So it's important to remember that uh, one of these foundation models, all it ever is going to know, it already knows. All of the tasks and all of the semantic representations that it can use, it already has. So when you fine tune it, you're not adding a new task. You can't add a new task to, to one of these models. All you can do is take your data and the, and the language model will, um, will fit your data into an existing task. So it makes its selection about what this thing is like, right? So this new data that you're feeding it, it says, oh, okay, you know, asthma is like a respiratory disease, right? So those things are close. Okay, so I'm gonna use that task and it's gonna be another example of that task within the model. So all of these things combine in the foundation model into an output space. And you'll hear that a lot, right? So the output space is all of the possible generations that the language model can produce. You can ask it some question, it's gonna give you some answer. All of those answers are gonna be in the, what's called the output space. Well, that output, output, output space, if, if you were to put a ring around it, so based on what it knows, is what I refer to as the generation horizon, right? This, that's the maximum limit of everything it knows. It can't tell you about anything outside of that generation horizon. So when you go in and you want to up, you want to train a model, you want to fine tune it, you want to add some uh, of your data to the model, um, what you're doing is you're actually looking at a specific part of that, of, of that um, output space, of that generation horizon. There's a, a specific, specific part of that model that um, you're going to be affecting, right? The, your data is going to be somewhere in the Stack Overflow Reddit world. You don't know within the model exactly where that is, but you know that that information is in there. That's why you've selected the model. So when you actually update the, the model, when you train it, what you end up doing is you take a data set that's targeted you know, for, that, uh, for that space, um, you fine tune it, right? So what you're doing is you're essentially adding examples of those neurons to the, to the model in order to, to um, essentially to, to bias the model to, to give you those kinds of results, right? So you want results within that cluster of, uh, of the model. That's the part of the model that you're using. So you have, you have data examples that you're going to feed the model that will enhance it to, um, to give you those kinds of responses. Well, if you overtrain the model, if you give it too many examples, if you give it too much weight, those neurons bias the rest, the whole model, the whole model can go off kilter. And, and if, if all you're interested in is a, is a narrow slice, then that's not, you're not gonna, you're not gonna run into any uh, trouble. But if you go and you ask the, the model for um, about uh, information that it knows that it previously knew um, on, the, on the left, for example, or that slice on the, slice on the, on the small slice on the right, um, it, those, those features are unreachable now for the model just because of the weighting you've given it. There's no way that it will um, be able to statistically navigate to those, you know, to those areas. So it's not gonna give you that information. It's gonna degrade the model so it's not producing um, um, results from that part of the, of the model. Um, and, and, and better or worse, depending on how you think of it, uh, the top part is, is where the model now exceeds, exceeds its, um, generation horizon, right? You've, you've created an eruption of outside of what it knows. And that's where you get, um, you'll get all hallucinations, uh, or if you're an optimist like I am, uh, emergent behavior, 
um, because those are things that the model was never trained on. There's no facts. It has no tasks that support that um, those answers. So, um, but if if all you're doing is a narrow scope of of uh, of queries, if you're only asking it about you know this sort of those features of interest, um, you might never run into a hallucination, right? So, so the the, um, the silver lining here is if you keep your use case tight and you have guardrails around filtering the output, right? So it's not giving you garbage, right? You can filter out all the garbage. It doesn't matter um, if you've biased the model um, because you're gonna filter out any of the, uh, the, the, the poor examples out of the model. All right, so I said some simplistic guidance. So well curated uh, context. So Victor was was talking about uh, the system prompt at the, at the at the front. Make sure you have um, a, a good context for your uh, question to the to the LLM. You know, context is king. So make sure that the, your context is is clear to the LLM what you are expecting the LLM to do. Um, so in your system prompts for, if you're using the API, have a good system prompt. Um, and if you're using chat, always start out with, with I, I like to start out with, let's talk about this. And I give it the topic. Let's talk about LLM you know, mode collapse. And, then, and so now it, it, it starts to, um, you know, uh, Look at a, at the at the right part of its uh, of its uh, information. Um, few shot designs are are, are key too. Um, you know, give it good examples. Um, Rag is another uh, great tool for for um, making sure that uh, your prompts are uh, are successful. Chain of thought. So um, put. Just put the, the phrase step by step. Think step by step. Think step by step is one of those magic prompt, you know, uh, tools. Um, and and then uh, less generations tend to be better for the most part. Um, I, I I work with Google a lot and, and I'm a, a Google um, startup partner, so I get um, access to. Uh, um, Gemini 1.5 um, Pro release with a million token contexts, and you know, the, for, for most use cases, it's it, it, it's just overkill. You don't need that much um, context for the most part. If if you are going to use the context, that much context, do it all in you know as few as few prompts as possible. Keep the generations. Um, to a, to a minimum for the most part. Um, and the thing that's, that I, I said that um, I had forgot is um, um, self-critiquing. So if, if you're afraid of the prompt giving you some um, less than stellar results, um, follow up the generation with critique yourself. You know, critique that. And it will go in, and it will go through the whole process, and in, it always improves it. It always improves it, and then you can tell it to use those, you know, use those suggestions or not. So self critique is a is a key uh, part as well. All right, so that's pretty much it. I wanted to make sure that I ended at four thirty, and I've got one minute for questions. If uh, do you want to do questions now, or should we wait for? Yeah. So we saw in one of the other presenters, uh, he said, hey, don't make things up. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it didn't work. So my question is, can you kind of give context as to like why that doesn't work or like why it doesn't seem to respond to things like that very well sometimes? Um, because it's not self-aware in that, in that way sometimes. It, so when it makes a mistake, it doesn't, or, or if it's making it, making something up, it doesn't know it's making it up sometimes. So, but if you if you use the self critique part, 
it'll catch that. It'll 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 catch its mistake, and it you know it'll come up with the oh I'm sorry, I should have paid more attention. So that's a better way to say the same thing. It sounds like. So the. Okay. I'm sorry. It, it sounds like don't. It sounds like telling it to self critique is kind of a better way of saying don't make things up. Oh, well, so so it's it's the the. The self-critique would generate a request would come after the initial generation, right? So you go back and you tell it to go and evaluate what it generated. Um, using the don't make things up as the in, in the initial part of the prompt, that's a very, very good idea. If if you if you want it to be grounded. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chris. All right. Appreciate it. Gee.